Hi guys, Brian the Scourge Lion back with part two of Doki Doki at Literature Club. Uh, quick catch up, the person that we chose to connect with the most was Natsuki. Uh, just because, well, she's bitchy, she's got an attitude. I just like it. Not in the last video, at the end, I said it is. it doesn't feel like a horror game. I felt like I'd been, like, tricked or something. But I've lately been told that you have to wait. Like, it does kick in, the horror does kick in, so... Yeah, I'm waiting for that. Not only is it horror, but it's also very disturbing, apparently. <laughs> also, in the last video, I tried to do, like, <laughs> bad voices. Uh, for this one, I'm gonna try to do accents instead. Uh, they might still be horrible, but at least, hopefully, they'll be consistent. We've also been trying to work out, like, the personalities for each of these. And the truth is, there's only one that we can't really figure out yet, and that's this Monica. So yeah, hopefully we'll be able to figure that out. But yeah, uh, let's let's just get straight into it. This is where we left off, trying to pick for who we're trying to connect with. And if I remember right from Natsuki, it was like sweet things. Was that right? Well, we're gonna go for it and see if it, we're right. Sugar, yeah, it's sweet things. So uh, sweet funny. Uh, ribbon, yeah. Rainbow! Oh, no, that went for Siori. Right, uh... How come Monica's not in this? I've only just figured that out. Monica's not one that we can pick. Uh, pink. Hmm, charm. Nope. Uh, kiss. Love. Oh, no, that's Siori again. Inside. Party. Oh, no, Siori again. Kitty, Sing, not Siori, we're, we're, we're kind of heading towards Siori and uh, Natsuki. Uh, let's go with Peaceful Desire, Peaceful, no Siori again, Puppy, uh, Childhood, nope. I mean, we're sort of getting towards somewhere, I think. Oh, doki Doki. <laughs> you know what, we're going with that. Oh, and it fits. Right, uh, cute. Hmm. Bed? No, that's it. Oh, yeah, she's sleeping constantly. Uh, analysis, uh, heaven sent. Oh, that one goes Yori. Chocolate. Raindrop cheer. Right, I'm not sure who we worked out from that one, but yeah. Another day passes and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple of days. Entering the club room, uh, an unusual scene greets me. Hi Brian. You're Sayori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just not used to... Being in the club, there's that. I'm just not used to being in the club, that's all. See, bad accents, but at least hopefully they'll be consistent. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple things with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Eh? That, that's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look around your purse? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? <laughs> no reason really. I just wanted to, I just wanted to look at it. Aha! Uh -huh. Siori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open, then turns it upside down and lets the contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fill out. Ah! So she's on the grind, she's, tra she's trying to graft some money out of me. Not happening, not happening, love. <laughs> I knew it. I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair. How did you even know? <laughs> it's simple. If, if you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. Because you're greedy. Like, like me, food, yay. 
So either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some, cheeky bitch. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so that leaves only one option. Ah, I give up. Don't make me feel guilty. If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. Ah, ha, ha. Yuri suddenly giggles. Eh? Didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in a book as always. Aha! Uh -huh. Right, I, ne I need a voice, hold on. I wasn't listening or anything. It was just something in my book. Yuri! Tell Brian to lend me let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved in... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Aha. Uh -huh. I just... Did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed into my book. Ah. Uh. Aha. <laughs> I really like it when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. <laughs> I apologize. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to expect accept the revolution. Retribution. That. <laughs> Still, coming from you, Sayori, I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? Uh, is is this what it's going to be? Is it, Are they going to be like possessed by demons or something? I kind of hope so. That would be freaking awesome. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. Yeah, she's a cheeky bitch. But you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me a little more credit than that, Sayori. <laughs> Pwah! Oof. Did she just get slapped? Yeah! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles to the desk. So she just had someone lobbed at her then. Ow! What was... Eh? A cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution. Retribution. <laughs> Actually, that one almost worked. Ah ha ha ha. I was just gonna give you... I was just gonna give it to you. But then I held you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction though. <laughs> Natsuki! That's so nice of you! I was so happy. You see the level of these accents is not really the best, but I'm trying my hardest. Natsuki's going to be the easiest because, uh, well, I'm Scottish. Sayori hugs the cookie. She's hugging the cookie. She is me. Maybe we should have went for Sayori because she is just me. Jeez, just eat it. Sayori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. So good. <laughs> Suddenly Sayori clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> you're going through You're going through a lot just over one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours looks really good too, Natsuki. Can I try it? Jeez. Beggars can't be choosers. <clears throat> but yours is chocolate. Aye. Why why do you think I gave you that one? So now, she, what, is she trying to graft the other cookie? See, th this is me. Th this is 100% me. I will try to graft your food, but I will not share my own because I'm a greedy twat. Fine. I'm still really happy you shared this one with me. <laughs> Sayori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Ah, jeez. I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge 
see or eat off her. Alrighty. Um. Suddenly, Siori leans down and takes a bite of Natsuki's cookie. Oh, bravo, bravo. The fake hug to get a bite of the cookie. I respect the grind. Oi! I'm going with oi instead of here. Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, uh, Siori trots away to safety. Yori and I laugh as well. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Siori? Eh? Natsu Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh. Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard from her? Heard anything from her? What? One minute. One minute. Have anything you. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. I haven't either. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do the day. So, Monica's seeming a bit sketchy. Is this all on purpose? Like, is she meant? Or oh, oh, or or are they the, like distracting us? Going, yeah, look, look at Monica, look at Monica, but don't look at the rest of the shit. Hmm. It, I shouldn't be trying to piece it together, should I? Uh, still nothing showing up in the in like the files or anything, but we'll keep going. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she? She's a. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. What, is she off getting a shag or something? Fair dues, fair play to her then. Eh, that's true. Excuse me? Sudden, suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry I keep, like, stuttering on that, but it's hard to try to keep track of all the voices. I'm super, super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. <laughs> Yet, yeah, American Monica, that's the way we're going. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. And if any of these accents offend you, I'm sorry. It's just better than, <laughs> They're all the same then. So yeah. Eh. Yeah. Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong, Will. Boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah. Well, my last period today was study hall. I nearly read that so wrong. <laughs> to be honest, I kind of lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have had the bell ring at least. Must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. I don't really. I just kind of started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool. You should play f something for us, Monica. That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Was she off playing piano? I, I don't know, Monica's seeming sketchy here. Like, I can't figure out, like, her personality and, like, she's being a bit, you know, off with everything. I don't know. We'll, we'll push on, we'll push on. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Brian. Monica smells sweetly. Well, will that change? Monica smells sweetly. Uh... I didn't mean to pressure you or anything like that. Uh, don't worry. I've been practicing a whole lot recently. And I'd really love the chance to share one, share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. One sec. Oh. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose to leave out Siori's mischie mischievous e escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Siori somehow already finished her entire cookie. It's 
sec. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet. When it does that, I think we're going somewhere else, but... Yeah. Man. It looks like no one wants to be bothered today. I slump down into the nearest desk. How am I supposed to occupy myself with something liter literature rel related by myself like this? I guess I could always read some of the book that Yori gave me, but, I but I'm feeling a little too tired to read. I could probably fall asleep right now. I close my eyes and end up listening in on Sayori's conversation with Monica. We're probably gonna seem really lame compared to all the other clubs though. Hmm. Well, we can't give up. The festival is our chance to show everyone what literature is all about. The problem is the idea of Literature Club sounds too dense and intellectual. But it's not like that at all, you know? We just need a way of showing that to everyone. Something that speaks to their crea creative minds. The thing is, like, something like a literature club could be beneficial when you're in school, like really beneficial, it'll help you go along with any of the courses that you're taking. Oh, I, I will say this now, like, invest in clubs, if you're in school or you're in college or whatever, invest your time into some clubs because they can really help you push it along with your work and help you get a better understanding of everything that, you know, you need to do for coursework or whatever. Let's get past that and get back into the game. Hmm, that doesn't that doesn't solve our problem though. Eh, what do you mean? Even if even if we come up with the most fun ever, no one will come in the first place if it's a literature event. So it's more important to figure out how to get people to show up in the first place, you know. And after they come, we can do the thing to speak to their creative minds. What's this? Sayori is taking this really seriously. It's rare to hear her deliberate, uh, de deliberating, deliber or deliberating like this. Huh? That's a good point. In that case, do you think food will do the trick? Sayori is gonna love that idea. I'm telling you now. Three, two, one. What kind? Uh, well, I guess we could. Cupcakes! 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 <laughs> well, she only said it once, but yeah, that, that's what's going on in her head. Guarantee it. Ah, good thinking. Natsuki would love to do that. Ah, you're right. Natsuki makes the best cupcakes. That works out perfectly. Why what? Why wasn't? That wasn't why you suggested it. Cupcakes speak to my creative tummy. <laughs> oh, this girl is awesome. Cupcakes it is then. I'm hungry. Anyway, we still need to work out the details of the event itself. I think we'll probably try to get through like just this day and then we'll cut it off there because the last episode was like an hour and a half and that was a bit, you know. I find myself smiling. In the end, Sayori is still using, you is still her usual self. But therein lies an unexpected reason I admire her. Unlike me, who has trouble finding any motivation of it at all? Siori can put her mind to things and make them come to life. I suppose that's why I end up letting her get on my case about things. I can't help but wonder what it would be like to see the world through her eyes. Yeah, pretty much the same. What? Huh? I open my eyes to find Siori's face filling my vision. Yeah, she's like right up there. She's like tr proper trying to get right up in my grill. I nearly fall out of my chair. Eh, sorry. Wait. I'm actually not sorry at all. It's your fault for sleeping like that. This isn't the napping club. Does our school have a napping club? You're staying up late again, aren't you? Now that you're in a club, you're going to have less time for anime, you know. You'll need to get used to it. Don't say that so loud. I glance over my shoulder to see if Monica overheard. It's true, though. Yeah. I know, I know. You're always, you're always looking out for me, Sayori. <laughs> it's what I do best. That's a problem. What about you? 
you look out for me better than you look out for yourself. You're still oversleeping every day, aren't you? Yeah. N not every day. That's not very convincing. How many days this w past week have you gotten up on time? That's... It's a secret. I knew it. Come on. At least give me the benefit of the day. I can't even do that. Look, Sayori, it's written all over you. So, yeah, she's lazy. Big deal. <laughs> eh? Sayori glances around at herself. Okay. How is it written all over me? Uh, you were clearly in a rush this morning. You, look, your hair is sticking out all around here. Ah! I run my fingertips down the side of Sayori's hair, trying to straighten it out. Might send the wrong message there, don't forget. Natsuki, she's the like one we're trying to uh, impress. Man, you nearly, really need a brush for this. My hair's just getting really hard. My hair's just really hard to get right. I won't fall for that. There's more than just your hair. Look, your bow isn't straight either. And there's a toothpaste stain down your right collar here. I tried to wipe the stain off with my finger. But no one would ever notice that. Of course they would. Nobody's going to tell you about it because they don't want to embarrass you. Fortunately, I don't really care about that. that that's the sign of a true friend. When you can do stuff and like you don't care about embarrassing them. That, that's a true friend. Hey, you meanie. And you don't even keep your blazer, but blazer buttoned up. Seriously, Sayori. Why do you think you don't have a boyfriend yet? Eh, that's super mean. Sorry, but you'll thank me later. I start to button up her blazer from bottom to top. Oh, this is th this is this is taking a turn, isn't it? Once you see how much better it looks, you'll change your mind. Oh, oh. Can I, can I put this on YouTube? Like, is this acceptable? Yeah, it, it, it kind of looks it kind of looks a bit. Uh. We'll push on. <laughs> this is so funny. What is? Well, I was just thinking how weird it is to have a friend who does these kind of things. Uh, don't say that. You make me feel weird about it. Stop it. Oh, it's stupid. It's okay though. I'm happy we're like this. Aren't you? Uh, I guess. Hey, be careful. The button may come off. Why is this one so hard to close? I struggle to fully close the button near her chest. This is... This is taking a turn. Does this thing even fit you properly? <laughs> well, it did when I bought it. <sighs> if you ever buttoned it, you would have you noticed sooner that it doesn't fit you anymore. What are you smiling about? It means my boobs are getting bigger again. Uh, yeah, th this is definitely not her game for kids. Don't say that out loud. <laughs> anyway, uh, you, look, you look much better now, so... Uh, why does it feel strange to see Sayori's blazer buttoned up like that? So now I'm a perv. Lovely. But it's so stuffy. Uh, it's not worth it at all. Sayori hastily unbuttons her blazer once more. Please don't take a turn. I want to be able to post this. Oh, it, look, it looks like we're fine. Phew. It's so much better now. Uh, Sayori puts her arms out and twirls around. So if I keep it unbuttoned, I won't get a boyfriend, right? What kind of logic is that? And why are you saying that like it's a good thing? Because if I had a boyfriend, then he wouldn't even let you do things like this. And you take better care of me than anyone else would anyway. So that's why I'm keeping it unbuttoned. We dodged a bullet there. I thought it was going to take a turn where I couldn't post this video. So glad that it didn't. So glad. Stop saying all of these embarrassing things. Eh? I didn't say anything embarrassing. Jeez. Well anyway, just try to focus up. Focus on trying to wake up a little earlier. If you focus on getting out of bed earlier, fine, fine. It's a deal. Hey, hey, hey. 
I guess we really are taking better care of each other than we are about taking care of ourselves. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Uh, so maybe you should come wake me up in the morning. You're doing it again, Sayori. Uh, but I was joking that time. Man, it's impossible to tell with you sometimes. Okay, everyone. Eh? Monica suddenly calls out. Why don't we share our poems we wrote now? Yay! Brian, I can't wait to read yours. Yes, in. I fail to sound enthusiastic, but Siori still trots away to retrieve her poem. Siori's just well enthusiastic, it's brilliant. Like, she's got to be the happiest person in the world. Uh, right, who should we read first? Uh, we've been doing Siori's accent a lot, so it's easier just to keep with it. Oh my goodness. It's so good, Brian. Eh? I love it. Especially after yesterday's poem. Uh, you're too on. You're too honest sometimes, Siori. But no, but really, I want to put this up on my wall. Can I, Siori? You must be seriously overreacting. I'm not a good writer at all. I honestly have no idea what I'm doing. Well, maybe that's why. Because I have no idea what I like either. Ah, uh, she's. I'd love to have that sort of brain where everything's just blasé. Well, it's blasé what I'm looking for. I'm not sure if that's the word that I'm looking for, but where everything's just carefree and everything, it'd just be amazing to live like that. Jeez. I'm sure Yuri's opinion has to be a little bit, a bit more constructive than this. Maybe even Natsuki's. Are you sure you didn't like it just because I wrote it? Eh? Well, maybe... Well, sure. I don't know. Well, I'm sure that's part of it. I think I understand you better than a lot of other people, you know. So when I read your poem, it's not just a poem. It's a Brian poem. Ah, oh, Sayori's awesome. Like, she's just awesome. And that makes it feel extra special. So I can feel your feelings in it. Sayori hugs the sheet tight to her chest. You're so weird, Sayori. <laughs> Well, I'm not very good at figuring out if poems are good or bad. But that's why I just go with my heart. If it makes me feel things, then it must be a good poem. I'm not sure that's exactly how it works. Then again, I guess conveying feelings is pretty import is an pretty important part of the whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Honestly, I don't even know what kind of writing you like in the first place. Yeah, me neither. Uh why don't you at least try giving it some thoughts? Oh, you want to write something for me? That's so sweet. Yeah, right. You're always thinking of other... But you're always thinking of other people. You need to think about yourself once in a while. Yeah, that that's a good message, to be fair. If you don't, you might end up getting hurt at some point. Eh? Well, I don't really know what you mean, but I'll keep that in mind. Well, whatever. Anyways, let's see. Hmm. I guess I like happy poems. Well, obviously. But sometimes I like sad poems too. Oh. <laughs> sometimes I, I like a little of both. I'm not sure what that is. There's a word for that, right? What's the word I'm looking for? Bittersweet. Oh, right. Bittersweet. Fair enough. Bittersweet. Uh. Bleh. Sorry, my mind just went whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, Yeah, I like things that are happy and things that are sad. Happy and sad? I can't see you liking something sad, Sayori. I was thinking that actually. She, she, she's like proper happy and everything all the time. Well, I like happy the most. But sometimes when you have a little rain cloud in your head, a sad poem can help give the rain cloud a little hug. As she's the sweetest person ever. It's awesome. And make an and make a nice happy rainbow. Say all right, that's unexpectedly poetic. I've made the wrong choice here. We should have been trying to make Sayori happy this whole time. Eh, it is. Maybe I'm getting a little maybe I'm getting better at expressing my feelings after all. Thanks, Brian. I should go write down that down, eh? 
Uh, you can read my, now, my poem now, okay? Bottles. I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all of my dreams. Little balls of sunshine all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in bottles all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after fr friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave. Discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow the dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through, through my locked front door. Finally, all done, I open up and in my friends come. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically put them, pull, uh, pull them from the shelf, one after another, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the towel between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts in shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading something. But all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Ah. Uh, I feel oddly sad after reading that. Like, it, it started out so nice and everything and then I feel really sad after reading that and I just can't explain why poor Sayori I kind of want to give the girl a hug holy crap Sayori did you really write this of course I did didn't I tell you yesterday I was going to write the best poem ever yeah but I mean I didn't expect something like this coming from you Monica taught me a whole lot and I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. If that's her feelings, then she's hiding somewhere. Because that, that made me feel sad, and I don't know why. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe it's because I'm not used to you being... Maybe it's because I'm used to you being che cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Oh, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little better. Writing, writing is magic. I've gotten pretty passionate about... You've got pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah. Writing's the best. I'm gonna keep writing until I die. Jesus. A bit much. Uh, don't get ahead of yourself. Ciro has always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. Yeah, you can kind of guess that. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Uh, next, let's go with Natsuki. Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me and then back at the poem. By now she must have read it more than once. Er, uh, is it that bad? No, no, it's no. It's good. It's really good. Okay. There, I said it. Ugh, it wasn't. This wasn't supposed to happen at all. Why can't you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. You're trying to impress me. Obviously, you think I'd let yourself. You think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break. Well, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you, you... Natsuki's face freezes like she just realised something. 
you you're trying to imp impress me Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time then the poem slips out of her hand and flutters to the floor I have to use the bathroom <laughs> she, she's ran off oh she got all embarrassed that's well cute hey Brian did you do something to Natsuki I just saw her rush out I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? No. I just told her that. My voice gets caught deep in my throat. There's no way I could tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Hmm. Monica sees the poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She reads through it, her smile not fading from her face. I see. You wrote this poem for Natsuki, didn't you? I mean, not really. In fact, didn't she like your poem a whole lot the other day too? I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. You're not cheating. Are you sure you're not cheating, Brian? Cheating? What do you mean by that? Never mind, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't understand Monica's joke at all. Anyway, well, man, how could, yeah, how could I cheat? It's a good point. Monica, you're a bit... You're a bit sly in that. You're weird. How do you think Natsuki feels about you? Oh, you don't need to answer that. It was just something for you to think about. Hey! Natsuki comes and snatches the poem out of Monica's hand. Neither of us had noticed her re-enter in the classroom. Did you read this, Monica? Of course I did. I liked it. <laughs> You should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know. You have a bad habit of doing that. Eh? But Brian wrote this poem. And we're supposed to share with everyone, right? Uh, Natsuki freezes. She apparently forgot that my poem is technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Brian has done sharing this poem with everyone. It's not like anyone would run want to read this anyway. In fact, I'm just going to hold on to this. If you insist. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Uh, just giving her that whole Oh, love is in the air. It seems like like it's working. Like we are pulling more towards Natsuki, so at least that's good. But uh, yeah, I kind of feel like we went the wrong way. Never mind. Uh, Natsuki. I'll give you the poem, but that's still not fair to Yori. <clears throat> she hasn't got to read it yet. So what? Well, I guess Brian is right, Natsuki. It's not fair if you don't let everyone finish reading it. Fine. Natsuki returns to my poem. It's not like she's going to like it, though. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, you won't, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. So basically, she's allowed to keep mine, but I'm not allowed to keep hers. Amy likes spiders. You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hurry, ugly spiders. That's not what. That's why I'm not friends with her. All right, fair dues. Amy has a cute singing voice. Right, so we've gone from not liking her to oh, this is nice about her. I heard her singing one of my favorite songs. Uh, I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders, that's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried not to let her touch me. <laughs> she likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to other people. She probably talks about spiders. <laughs> what if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. I'm gonna tell everyone. <laughs> Jesus Christ! So first it's gone from a hater to, you know what, she should just die. Jesus! Do you know what? To each their own, fair enough. No bad, right? 
it's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think it was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realise how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree with the subject of this poem. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an arrogant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course, it's how... It's about how everything thinks... Everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It, it can be about anything. Sorry, I'm going jumbled again. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or guilty pleasure. I suppose in that sense the poem's done what it, it was intended for. But it's still just, yeah, the world's better off without them. Okay, fair enough. Jesus Christ. Something that you're afraid if people find out they'd make fun of you for or think less of you. That just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes as long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least I can relate to that. And I'm sure lots of other people can too. It's not what I do. It's what I do best after all. I don't like writing unless there's a good message to take away from it. <clears throat> like conveying emotions is important. But I want to make people think, not just feel. Remember that. I'm gonna write a good one for tomorrow too, so look forward to it. Don't worry Natsuki, I'm looking forward to it. Your poems are just kinda weird. Natsuki, uh, wait a minute, uh, Monica's already read my poem though. Uh, we'll go with Yori, she's like posh wearing it. Right. Ah, it's my turn. Let's see how it compares to yesterday's. Hmm, I see. It's a bit different. I respect you for trying different things, Brian. Were you inspired by Natsuki's poem? Or Sayori's, perhaps? Well, I guess you could say that. I thought so. I'm happy for you. You don't need to find ins inspiration. You don't need to find inspiration in my poems. It was that a little sly hint of jealousy, like, uh, he's, he's copying off the other two, but he ain't copying off mine, what the fuck? I write them for myself, not for anyone else. So I don't really need other people to like them or anything. Yuri, eh? I'm sorry for being blunt, but you're overthinking this a little. You are, to be fair. Just because our poem styles are different doesn't mean that I dislike your poems. In fact, if I tried to do something in your style, I would probably just do a terrible job. To be fair, I reread, uh, like, went back and read her poem and it was really good, to be honest. I see. I'm sorry. My, sh my stupid mind, it does... It likes to do that sometimes. Anyway, you don't need to be afraid to be a little more daring. Metaphors can go a long way. Don't feel like you need to work on your brain like turning a bunch of gears. Try letting your mind wander through your feelings and write down the things you see and hear. See, that's the thing. Yori's probably the best person to go to if you're trying to uh, better yourself for the poems because she knows her shit. Like, she le legit knows what she's doing. That's one way to truly enable your reader to see inside your mind. It's, it's a very intimate exercise. I see. That's... That's a certainly interesting technique. Thanks for sharing. I have, um, well, an example of that, if you'd like to read it. Of course. Is this the poem you wrote for today? Yuri nods and timidly hands me her poem. The Raccoon. It happened in the dead of night while I was slicing bread for a guilt a Snack, I think that says. My attention was caught by the scuttering of a raccoon outside my window. That was, I believe, the first time I noticed my strange tendencies as a... something human. Can't really read that word. 
I gave the raccoon a piece of bread. My sub subconscious, well aware of the consequences. Well aware that a raccoon that is fed will always come back for more. The enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. My bread, my hungry curiosity. The raccoon, an urge. Okay. The moon increments its phase and reflects, I think that's what it says, that much something light off my cutting knife. Or much more light off my cutting knife. The very same light that glistens in the eyes of my raccoon friend. I slice the bread, fresh and soft. The raccoon becomes excited, or perhaps I'm merely projecting my emotions onto the newly satisfied animal. The raccoon has taken to following me. You could say that we've gotten quite used to each other. The raccoon becomes hungry more and more frequently, so my bread is always handy. Every time I brandish my cutting knife, the raccoon shows me its excitement. A rush of blood. Classic something conditioning. I slice the bread, I feed myself again. This this bit this bit's got me oddly unsettled. The it, what, what was it? The the enticing beauty of my cutting knife was the symptom. My bread, the bread, my hungry curiosity, and the raccoon and urge. That it's got me unsettled. I'm not gonna lie. It seems a bit weird to talk about, but like. It looks like she's saying, like, the raccoon and the bread and, uh, yeah, the raccoon and the bread are, like, metaphors. Is the cutting knife a metaphor as well? Like, I think the cutting knife's probably a metaphor. I, I'm not sure. If you guys know, let me know, please. Well, actually, no, don't, because it'll probably tell me. But, yeah, uh... Just feel odd with that one. It's oddly unsettling. Um, I was a little more daring with this one than yesterday's. I can see that. It's a lot more metaphorical. See, that's what I was saying. I don't know if it's my fault, but I can't begin to imagine what this poem's about. That's right. It's a little closer with my preferred writing style. Using the poem as a canvas to express my vivid imag imagery and conveying emotions through them. Yet, if I take it to face value, then I can't even figure out what it's supposed to mean. Well, I think it's something that different people can relate to in their own way. I wanted to express the way it feels for me to indulge in my more unusual hobbies. Okay, that, that's just made it ten times fucking weirder. So yeah, it is all metaphors, but what's the unusual hobby? It's those sorts of things I'm usually forced to keep to myself. So I sometimes enjoy writing about them. Uh, that's funny. Didn't Natsuki also write something like that? About someone being ridiculed for a strange interest? Eh, uh, she, she did. Uh, yeah. She was talking about how it doesn't matter what you're into as long as you're not hurting anyone. She, she's right. Uh, I mean... Does she really feel that way? Yeah. Sounds like you two have more in co more in common. Uh, well, that's well, that's interesting. To me, she seemed like the kind of person who would make fun of my hobbies. Well, we don't know what your hobby is yet. But like, yeah, don't make fun of anyone's hobbies. Like, they've they've got a hobby. Uh, it's just something that they enjoy doing. There's no no point in taking the piss out of someone for it. I, if you do, you're just a bastard. Like, honestly, you're just a bastard. I collect coins. Take the piss out of me for that, I don't care. Uh, but I suppose that's my fault for judging, isn't it? Ah, uh, please don't tell her I said that. Uh, don't worry, I have no reason to. Okay. Well, thank you for sharing it with me. After all, if I hadn't learned to embrace my own weirdness, I w would probably hate myself. 
I might, I might be a r ranting a little by now. But I'm glad that you're a good listener. So Yori's... I don't know, Yori's is a little weird for me. I need to, I want to know what this hobby is. This episode feels a little less... You know, kid friendly and that, like the last one. Like the last one just seemed like... You know... PG and all that lot. It didn't really seem like anything weird was happening. But this one, this one seems a bit different because it is, I've just got a feeling that that's that it's a dark thing that she's got a hobby for because she said it was an unusual hobby and that. But yeah, let, let's continue. Sorry. Hi again, Brian. That was kind of silly with Natsuki early, earlier, wasn't it? I'm glad the two of you are getting along so well. That's one way of putting it. Anyway, I already read your poem, but you can go ahead and read mine now. I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me. Okay. The colours, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colours. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony of meaningless sound. Oh, noise, sorry. The noise, it won't stop. Violently grading waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sign. Coisine. Sine coisine tangent. It looks like that's what it says. Sorry if it's not. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaninglessness. Lord me. Sa save me. Lord me. Um. What? Am I meant to like save the game and then load it again? I mean, I'll try. Uh, but yeah. It's kind of an odd one. Uh, hmm. Right. So, save. Alright, so we've saved it. Uh, right, so now we'll load it. It's not really done anything. F fair enough. It's even more abstract, uh, abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. Uh, anything in... There's still nothing in the files. It's just... The, it's just a kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. It's almost like magic. Go on, Monica. The way I wrote these lines really short makes it feel... The way I wrote these lines really short... Should have a comma there. <laughs> makes it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. Uh huh. Sometimes asking what a poem about isn't really the right question. A poem can be as ex abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with the reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. What? Oh! That's... What? That, that's weird. What's she on about? You never know when you might change your mind. Is Monica self-aware? Oh, that's that's giving me chills, that. I'm not gonna lie, that's kind of weird. Is Monica self-aware? Uh, oh, we're, we're gonna push on. 
Monica, there's something wrong with you, love. Like, legit. Or when something unexpected may happen. Wait, is this even about riding? What am I even talking about? Yeah, what the fuck are you talking about? You're freaking me out. Haha. <laughs> that's, that's my advice for the day. Thanks for listening. Okay, everyone. Pardon? We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something a little extra planned for today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Oh, shit. Is this about the festival? Uh, we're, right, we're just about on an hour, but I feel like we should complete the day. I'm gonna push on and complete the day. I apologize if it's another, like, hour and a half episode. Like, this day, it seems to be going on longer. Well, sort of. Uh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute pe preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep, the, keep it simple, okay? Right, so yeah, we're... Right, this is what I alluded to earlier. Uh, we're putting on a festival. Uh, but yeah, I don't think Yuri's going to be alright with it. She seems a bit shy. Like, Natsuki, she seems like she just doesn't really like people much. So, I don't think she'll be into it either. But Yuri definitely won't. She's too shy. Sayori, though. Sayori's fucking up for anything. We won't need much more than a few decorations. Siori has been working on the posters, and I, I've designed some of the pamphlets so we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't really tell us what we're actually doing for, for the event. Ah, I'm sorry, I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Yeah, these two definitely won't be up for that. Performing? Huh. Um, Monica? Yeah, we're, we're gonna have a... We're gonna be having a poetry performance. Each of us are gonna choose a poem and recite it during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let anyone else come up and recite the poems too. See, that does make the event a little bit more exciting. It lets anyone, get, like, be on the stage and that. Fair enough, uh, fair enough, you're gonna put on a decent event there. Siori's putting all of the posters in in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. Also, uh, are we going to actually get to do it then? Uh, like, the event? That'll be pretty cool. <laughs> Siori, who's been colouring in a poster, holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't. You didn't already stop putting the posters up, did you? Uh, well, I did. You really think that it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea, but I didn't sign up for this, you know. There's no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. Even my Scottish accent feels put on at this point. Uh, I agree with Natsuki. I could never in my life do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys, no Siori. <laughs> that kind of fucked up. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never really shared their poems with anyone until just a couple of days ago. It's a lot to ask them to recite their poems out loud in a whole room of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. Yeah, you fucking creepy bitch. Are you going to tell them to save the game process as well? I'm so sorry. But... I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And then more people who perform will be, will better, the better will be able to show everyone what the literature club is all about. Yeah, it's about expressing our feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right, and it's for those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? 
it's time uh, to inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. We all do. And if it and if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know we can do it. Mm -hmm. Natsuki and Yori remain silent. Siori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Siori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. At least, the least we can do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... Mm, it looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Uh, Alright, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. Alright. Phew. Uh, phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yori? Uh, Yori dejectively glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I really don't have much choice. Ah, that's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh gosh, you'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. Oh, so the stage is in this. Like, fair enough. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're gonna practice reciting them in front of each other. No way. Monica, this is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little bit more comfortable. Oh crap, are we, are we going to sit through more poems? Like, this episode's pushing on already. Uh, can I go next? Ah, of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. Then she stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem. Monica begins reciting her poem. Oh, right, so we don't have to hear it. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line that she recites and brings the words to life. Uh, yeah, it's probably because she's a freaky bitch. Like, I, I know it's probably pushing it a bit much, but that really did, like, creep me out. It's it's still there on my spine. I, I don't like that. I don't like the fact that she might be self-aware. It, it's, it's creepy. This is, is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Sayori looks amazed. Yori has an intense look on her face that I don't understand. Finally, Monica finishes the, rec the recitation or whatever it's called. Uh, the four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That was so good, Monica. Uh, thank you very much. I was hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Sayori? I'll go next. <laughs> that fucked up. Who are? Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri catches a sheet of paper between her hands and clutches and stands up. Uh, keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This po this poem is called Yuri anxiously, anxiously glances at each of us. Fucking hell. Yeah, she's going to have that confidence because like, she's got that adrenaline boost. But that's going to disappear when the shyness hits. You can do it, Yuri. It's it's called After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts to read the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting so much effort in? It, it's the adrenaline rush. You, you just want to get it over and done with and be like, Yes, I did it. Come at me, bro. Oh, cringe, I just said that. As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharpest of syllables of a fierce and confident woman. 
The poem is full of twists and turns and is struck its structure that she insinuates enunciates insinuates with perfect timing sorry this must be a rare glimpse into the right the whirling fire yori keeps concealed inside her head there's a lot of big words in this suddenly she's finished everyone is stunned yori snaps back into reality and glances around as if she's bewildered even herself i it's up to me to save this situation I'm the first one to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterwards and we give Yori the reaction she deserves. Not recognition, sorry, I just saw that. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for hers. We were just so caught off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yori holds the poem to her chest and rushes back to her seat. That's happened with, like quite a lot with me like you just don't expect something from someone and no matter like how it makes you feel your first thing is just your shock and a lot of the times you can be just stood there like what really so yeah I, I get that Yuri that was really good thanks for sharing looks like Yuri is down for the count okay I guess I'm next then so Yuri hops out of a chair and cheerfully walks over to the podium this one's called My Meadow. Uh, ah, ha ha ha. Sorry, I giggled. Eh, <laughs> Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah, uh, try not, try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting to yourself in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then. I, I just think her problem is like she's got my mindset so her train of thought is like chicka, 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 that, That's literally what my head's like like I've, I've actually had to write down their accents just so that I know what accent I'm giving each of them Because <laughs> I would have forgot like a million times Sayori begins her poem Sometimes it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match the poem isn't aimless, aimlessly cheery as Sayori is, but it's serene and bittersweet. And if I, I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Yeah, because she's just pure. I don't know. Like, like Sayori's just awesome. Maybe that's what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone than I knew, than I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. Eh, even Brian liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What's that mean? Yeah, well, what does it mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem really fits you nicely. But it might be... But it might be that other poems didn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh, I really don't understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where a sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might, they might, they might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's well, I, I've been practicing that sort of thing. It's just embarrassing to do in front of everyone. Oh, she's got all shy. Eh. Yeah. The next time, I'm gonna make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay. Now, who's next? Natsuki? Hmm. Don't make me go before Brian. It's not like I compare to any of you guys anyway. Might as well let Brian lower everybody's standards a little before I, I have to do it. A oh, lovely! I thought we were developing this rapport, I thought we were becoming friends and that, but nah. You, you just basically said I'm shit. Natsuki. It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. It's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with what I wrote for today. I stand up and set, step in in front of the podium. 
Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I hate that. I hate having to stand in front of people. It, like, on, on camera, it's fine. Like, I can talk to you guys and I can give you everything. But standing, like, in front of an audience, it just freaks me out. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. S sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. Oh great, shoot down my confidence. Oh well actually she's wanting to pick it up, isn't she? Alright, fair enough. The freaky one's like, trying to boost me. That's something will, that's something that'll improve over time though. Yeah, maybe. Alright then, that just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah, I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way over to the podium. The poem is called, it's called, Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Hmm. Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she started reciting her poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. Ah, oh, I like the sour attitude. It gives her a bit of a boost. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and a rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving, li giving life to the poem, sorry. Natsuki finishes and everyone applauds, and she huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, well, at least you feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people. Uh, well, I didn't even read that properly, that was a question. I apologise people, hopefully you got it. I mean, doing that in front of other people would be way easier. I could put on whatever face I want for other people, but when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. It feels like I'm putting on this Scottish accent, like legit, it just feels like that. that that's a surprise, Natsuki. I would... I think it'd be the other way around for me. Well, at least that's how it is, so... Well, that's just how it is, so... Why do I keep saying at least when it's not even at least in there? I apologise. Well, I guess, in that case, you won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through today. It might be hard, but I hope you all have an idea of what it's like now. Make sure you pick up a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? It'll be making pa I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez, should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too, it doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised you're putting all this effort into the club. It makes me really happy. It feels like she's trying to push herself more towards me. But you're freaky. That, uh, that, that saved me bit's just going to stick with me. I apologise for bringing it up again, but that's just going to stick with me. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. And as for the festival... We'll be planning tomorrow and then we'll have a nice weekend. We'll have all weekend to prepare. Monday's a big day. I can't wait. I I can do this. I can do this. Alright. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. It's for, if it's for the sake of the club and impressing Monica, then I'll do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yep. Look at you two always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make a big deal out of it. It must be nice, though. Well, uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Brian. You don't have to say it. Whatever, let's go already. I walk home with Sayori once more. Even though it's been a few days, a lot of things have happened have changed already. But today, Sayori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Sayori. Eh? 
sorry, I was spacing out. Ah, no wonder. Um, I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to, I mean, Siori fumbles with her words. So let's just say, one day Yuri asks you to walk home. Huh? What would you do? What kind of, uh, what kind of question is that? You kind of put me on the spot here. Hey, uh, still walk home with Siori. She's like my best friend. You're not going to ditch your best friend, are you? Fucking hell. Siori, you really think I would ditch you for Yuri? Eh, but she's so beautiful and smart. Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides, you always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't ru I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Brian. You think about me way too much sometimes. Yuri would deserve it if she wanted it, so... See, alright, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point of in speculating something that's never going to happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of weird for Siori to curse so much about, but I want to respect her and keep her happy too. And then, then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Oh, and we're here. Right, so save. Uh, we'll save it into an empty slot. And yeah, that's actually where we're going to finish up for today. Uh, basically rounding out. It's starting to get a little weird. Like the poems seem a bit... Uh, like Yuri's, Yuri's one was the weirdest poem for me, I think. The fact that the metaphors seemed very, very dark. And this hobby of hers, I need to know what it is because it does seem really dark. Monica, uh, she's freaking me out. I think she's self-aware and if she is, that's going to change the game a whole lot. I like it. Like, I, I like it from a gaming standpoint, but the, the creep part inside of me is just like, no, I don't like it, I don't like it. But yeah, as a game, it's it's advancing and it's starting to take a turn and I'm really enjoying it. And I hope you guys are too, because I, wa I want to keep going and I want to finish this. And I just really hope you guys are getting invested in it. But with that being said, I will continue, go on to a part three. But I hope you did enjoy this video. And if you did, don't forget to leave it a like. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and hit notifications so you can always stay up to date. Uh, please don't spoil anything in the comments. Don't like comment anything about the game because that'll just kind of ruin it for me and I don't want that. But yeah, that being said, I will see you guys in part three.